this evening is Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube, located at 1161 and 1171 Ridge Road and 974 Jackson Road. Applicant Guggenheim Development Services LLC is requesting a use variance and area variances to allow a lot area of 36,537 square feet, where a minimum of 45,000 square feet is required, and a nine foot south side setback, where 20 feet is required, associated with the construction of a 3,000 square foot Jiffy Lube Auto Care Shop on a proposed 0.83 acre parcel consisting of existing SBLs numbers 080.13-2-1, 080.13-2-2 and 080.13-2-52 located in an MC medium intensity commercial district under section 225-17 of the code of the town of Webster. Good evening. It's nice to be here. My name is Betsy Brugg. I'm with Woods Oviak Gilman. Chris Boye from Boulder Engineering is here with me tonight. Um, we're glad to be here on this application. Best for last, I think. Um, I thought I'd uh, start, we brought some plans, I think you have uh, plans in the materials, but we're here tonight to request a use variance uh, to allow a Jiffy Lube, which is an auto uh, service type use in the MC district, uh, as well as a couple area variances in connection with the project. Can you hear me okay, this microphone? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, do I need to carry it with me? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to walk over here to the plan. So you're very familiar, I'm sure, with the corner of Ridge Road and Jackson Road. This is the bank over here. We have a strip plaza over here. There's some homes here. There's a house here, a house here. Um, and this is our site. Um, it actually consists of, I think we have a subdivision somewhere out here. It's currently four parcels. There's a corner parcel that has the house and garage here. There's a second parcel that has this house and extends. It's a deep parcel that goes back. Um, there's a commercial uh, parcel here that had a commercial building and another house that are not part of the use variance request, but are part of the resubdivision. Uh, and then there's a house over here at 974 Jackson Road uh, that's involved in the application, but is um, being uh, outside of our outside of our. I'm sorry, it's this one outside of our development site. So uh, the plan is to carve out this corner area, about 0.84 acres, uh, for development for a Jiffy Lube, um, which is an auto-related use. They do oil changes, uh, brakes, uh, a bunch of other, let's see, I want, I want to make sure I get it right. So they do you know, all types of minor vehicle repair, no heavy repair, um, oil changes, tire replacements, alignments, brake service. Um, while it is an auto use, all of the activity related to the Jiffy Loop occurs inside the building. Oh, where is that building here? So we're proposing a 3,000 square foot building. It's a very low intensity type of a use. Essentially, um, if they're uh, successful, they're aiming to have you know, 30, 35 uh, customers a day. 20 to 25 is more typical. And when they open up, they will probably start with significantly less than that until they build up uh, their business. Uh, the idea is that um, customers come in, they drive in, they get their service, and they go on their way. It is a, a destination. They don't generate significant amounts of traffic. They are, are an auto-related use, but again, all activity occurs inside the building. Um, it's, the proposal is to do a, a really nice uh, brick building consistent with some of the newer development in town, uh, such as the um, Royal Car Wash, uh, I think the uh, Mark's Pizza, Pizzeria. I think there's a few other uh, newer brick buildings in the area. Let's see. Um, the planning board took a look at this recently. They saw a concept plan. I believe they sent a letter to the zoning board uh, recommending approval of, uh, they said they were comfortable with use variance and um, comfortable that it will not generate a high volume of traffic. It's a low impact use to the neighborhood as opposed to uh, some of the previous applications. In terms of the application in front of you, um, I thought I'd go through the use variance first. Um, that's kind of like the meteor part of the application. 
I did submit uh, some information to you. Uh, the property uh, has a common owner. The property was originally purchased uh, when Roe Photo uh, opened up in town. He operated from 2004 to 2016 in the commercial building. Uh, unfortunately, when uh, Xerox uh, and its executives stopped needing uh, photo finishing and processing, you know, his business went down and he eventually closed this location. When he acquired the property, he originally thought he was going to be here for a while and possibly expand. So what currently exists is the commercial building and uh, the existing houses. The houses are non-conforming structures. They don't meet code. They are residential type structures. They're deteriorating. They're in pretty poor condition. They don't meet setback requirements. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're not uh, anything that is uh, consistent with the current zoning and would be very difficult to repurpose. The house at, uh, at the corner here, they've had um, a gentleman uh, with a type of repair business. He's basically been using the property rent-free in exchange for paying the, the electric. Um, he's basically been maintaining the property because they've had break-ins. I think all the copper has been stolen. Um, you know, all of the, the house is really just uh, not habitable. It's kind of outlived its life. Uh, so I think, um, you know, this project offers an opportunity to really clean up the corner. The, um, let's see, the package we gave you, or that we submitted, um, I've included sort of a summary of all of the marketing history of the property. Um, shortly after uh, Roe moved in, I think there was some interest in the property from Walgreens. Um, they would have, that would have required him to relocate. Uh, they were also his largest competitor at the time. That didn't go anywhere. Uh, he operated until 2016. Um, I kind of gave you a summary. I'd be happy to go through all of it in detail, but I, I think it's, you know, let me know how much you, you'd like me to repeat. Uh, but it's been listed by, you know, numerous brokers. Uh, Caliber Brokerage currently has the listing. And there's a letter from Jake Rivera uh, included in the application, essentially explaining all the interest that existed in the property, kind of the history of the potential uses of the property. Um, you know, the, uh, in 2016-17, Fast Track was interested in the property, put the property under contract. They started the approval process. I don't know if this board actually denied them, but they were not well received at the town, and they eventually terminated the contract. I and I know Don ball. may remember if that was a, it was a strip denial. Ball. I believe there were variants. I thought she said Fast Track. Well, Fast Track was 2017. I don't remember the fact. Yeah, they told me 2016, 17. I don't think that ever came this here. Far. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Did get there the planning board, though. Maybe. We addressed yeah. them 2019. I guess the meeting minutes were far. We addressed right. the, uh, for, uh, <coughs> there was a strip plaza proposal. But it, it, there it was, encompassed yeah. all of the sites. Right, so Fast yeah. Track took a look at it. Fast Track was interested. Mm -hmm. um, Burn Dairy has, has been interested in it, but they're essentially the same type of use as Fast Track. And given the reception they got on the fast track, they did not pursue the burned dairy. Um, Jiffy Lube is an auto type use, um, but you know, very different from a gas station. There's no outdoor pumps or activity. There's no large trucks. Um, and then um, uh, Taylor Construction, Taylor Builders, did put the property under contract uh, for some type of a commercial building that would have been anchored by a uh, medical type use. That user uh, found another location because there's a tremendous amount of available space, so they found a, a, a kind of a preferable location, and that contract was terminated. So that is the uh, kind of the history of the site. Now, the application for the use variance, we're not asking for use variance for all of the um, the owner's property. We're requesting it only specific to the Jiffy Lube and this parcel. Uh, the broker is already finding that by marketing and uh, marketing the property with this corner improved with the Jiffy Lube, just cleaning up this corner and having a compatible commercial use has actually been very helpful in the marketing of the remainder of the property. So they don't have anything um, lined up here uh, at the present time, but there is more interest now that they know that the corner is going to be cleaned up. Let's see. Um, Some of the reasons uh, that the property uh, hasn't uh, been successfully marketed, you know, I'm not, I don't have the expertise here, but we do have uh, the letter from, from Caliber 
really talking about kind of the mix of challenges. There's some challenges. Uh, the retailers, the businesses that are looking for sites, um, this site is not really a, it's not really central enough on Ridge Road to get the, um, you know, quick service type drive through restaurants, which I think at one point they were encouraged to pursue. So there's not enough traffic here for some of the retailers looking for space. Um, the other issues are just the, the redevelopment costs. There's only certain kinds of businesses that are looking to build new construction. There's a lot of available space. Um, and um, I think Jake has kind of given you a, a narrative of all of the different businesses that he's approached and that they've reached out to. Caliber, I think, is a fairly well-known commercial broker in town. They've been representing the property for the past couple years. They have presented it to numerous national and regional companies. They've presented it to other brokers. They have a, um, you know, a network of brokers. They've sent flyers out. They've sent emails. They've used LoopNet. They've used some of the other online platforms. I think they've done the ICSC, which is the, the International Conference of Shopping Centers, um, which is sort of a marketplace where people go and look for tenants and occupants. Uh, they've done really everything that a commercial broker would do to try to find a, um, you know, a good commercial use for the property. So I think that um, Jake's done a pretty good job at summarizing uh, the marketing efforts, but I'm, I'm happy to, you know, answer more questions about that. The um, existing hardship, so the property owner obviously is paying taxes and insurance. I did give you a uh, income and expense statement in your application. I'd be happy to go through that and through those numbers. He does have some mortgages. Um, he's basically losing money. The house, uh, let's see, this building is no longer occupied. I don't even know if the gentleman who maintains it is still doing that. Uh, this house is supposed to be a two-family. The second floor is not habitable. The first floor does have an occupant. Um, 974 does have a tenant. It's not included in the application other than that a portion of the land is included. So, and then his current property over here, which isn't part of the application, uh, does have, uh, this residence does have an occupant. The commercial building, I think, is empty. Let's see. So, uh, I think we have tried to, I think we can demonstrate that the applicant cannot generate a reasonable <coughs> return for permitted uses. There just, there just aren't permitted users out there who are interested in this property. I think they've worked pretty diligently to try to market it. Again, I've given you information dating back to, I think the first broker that had the listing here was um, Pyramid back in 2009. I think they had some of the property. Then followed by Magellan, followed by Mission Commercial Realty. In 2015, Hot Commercial took over, um, and Caliber Brokerage took over um, most recently in 2018. So uh, the second criteria is whether the hardship related to the property is unique. I think in this case it is unique. We are, you know, every piece of property actually has some uniqueness. There is some uniqueness to this location. Uh, it does not have the traffic volumes to attract the type of users that you might want in the medium density commercial district. It is a challenging location. It does not have the co-tenancies and the neighboring uses that often businesses are looking for. There are a lot of residential um, still over here, and while the area becomes more commercial, um, it, you know, it has more potential, but, you know, it's really a mixed, uh, mixed bag over here in terms of the neighboring uses. It is high-intensity commercial on the opposite side of the street, and it's residential zoning to the south, so it's a very mixed zoning area, um, and again, the cost of new construction being very high, there's just only so many users in the market that are willing to build new construction. And this isn't an optimal location because of the traffic counts. Let's see. Um, the existing structures, again, they are in, in really bad shape. I think that cleaning up the corner would be beneficial and really just bring up the whole neighborhood. Um, they're non-conforming structures. They'd be difficult to repurpose. And I think knocking them down and put, putting in a modern code compliant development um, really would be beneficial. You know, the Jiffy Lube itself is a 3,000 square foot building. It is a brick building. All of the uh, repair work is done inside the building. 
Uh, they have four or five employees. It's a daytime office type of a use in terms of you know, the hours of operation are no greater than, I think, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and maybe less than that on certain days. So it's really a kind of a good, I think, commercial transitional use for an area that also has nearby residential. Um, the, let's see, lost my train of thought here. Um, so whether we're going to alter the essential character of the neighborhood, I guess we're talking about improving the corner. I think that this project as a whole is going to really upgrade and improve the character of the neighborhood. It's cons the use is consistent with the character of the neighborhood. It certainly isn't the most intensive, intense use here. The bank has a drive through We've got a car wash, a royal car wash that had a use variance. We've got, we don't have any um, auto use immediately across the street, but there is some not too far down. It's really pretty much a mixed area. We would be cleaning up and reducing the number of curb cuts and driveways. Um, you know, you typically wouldn't have commercial uh, curb cuts this close to the intersection, as I think you probably know. So we're reducing the number of driveways. We're eliminating some of these non-conforming buildings. We're upgrading the site. Um, other than the variances that are, we are requesting, and actually the only one that's really specific to this site is the, the acreage. This is a little smaller than code allows, but if you look at how the, code, the uh, parcel is carved out, it's really carved out to leave this building intact, leave this house intact, and really put the lines where they belong, given the existing conditions and structures on the property. Uh, the variance over here that we're requesting over for uh, 974 Jackson Road is really internal to the, to the property. So I think it would be, in terms of the character of the neighborhood, I think that the use we're proposing is consistent with the character of the neighborhood. It's a low intensity use. It's lower intensity than some of the other commercial uses. The quality of the development is also going to help bring up the uh, character of the neighborhood and support the character of the neighborhood by inviting um, you know, quality users to the remaining property. The more good, solid uses you have, the more additional businesses are going to want to come um, into, the, uh, into the neighborhood. Let's see. Um, <coughs> the alleged hardship is not self-created. The hardship is really the result of the existing conditions. We have you know, pre-existing buildings, pre-existing driveways, and an inability to uh, market the property for permitted uses. Uh, as far as the area variances, uh, as I said, we're requesting two area variances, one of which is for the size of the Jiffy Lube parcel, and one of which is for the setback. Let me just move to this plan here. Uh, this was the other. This is the other direction. So here is 974 Jackson. So we now have a 9.1 foot setback here, where code requires 20. Again, it's internal to the subdivision. Um, and the second uh, variance, as I mentioned, is for the size of the lot. Now, while we do need a variance, I would point out that the development itself of this parcel is completely code compliant. We're not creating any setback variances. We've got lots of green space. We're not excessive on our parking. We have a really nice looking building proposed. Uh, so there's nothing about the project itself that creates any non-conformities as far as this parcel. Uh, so we think that this is really the appropriate size. You know, you don't want a property line running through another building or running through, you know, somewhere that just isn't appropriate. Um, in respect to the side setback variance, um, maintaining 974 really provides this kind of a transitional buffer to the residential zoning to the south. So the plan is to leave this house in place. Um, I know that there was a comment there's some DRC comments, and specifically there was a comment about that variance and that house. And um, I don't know if you want me to go through the DRC comments now, or should I hold off? I can speak to this one a little bit. You might as well continue. Okay. Great. So there was a comment. I don't know if everybody had a chance to look at it. Concerned about maintaining the 100-foot buffer and recommending that there be a condition on approval that no future variances be granted should this property be redeveloped. Um, I certainly appreciate concerns for what might happen to the property, but I don't think that would be an appropriate condition um, because the applicant, you know, we don't know what's going to happen here, but whatever does happen here, if they do need a variance, they're going to have to go through this process and they're going to have to demonstrate that they meet the, 
requirements, the criteria for the granting of the variance, and that's really the appropriate time to consider whether or not the variance, uh, a variance is appropriate. At this point, there's no plan to do anything with the house other than to leave it here. This setback really has no impact on, uh, on anyone, but keeping the house here, I think, does um, you know, benefit the adjacent um, residential zoning. Uh, we also, as Chris had pointed out to me, have a sewer easement through here. So there's really some other issues kind of with this area. So, you know, I don't think that this setback variance really has any impact on, on anyone. Um, let's see. I think I covered that. Um, I could go through the other area variance criteria. Um, the character of the neighborhood, I don't think the variances are going to have any adverse impact or produce any uh, detrimental impact on any of the nearby properties or character of the neighborhood. If anything, we are uh, trying to preserve kind of the separation from the residential zoning. Um, the variances really will allow um, really quality development on the corner, but won't have any adverse impact on anyone. This uh, setback variance is internal, um, as is really the acreage uh, lot variance, lot size variance for the Jiffy Lube. Um, it also will preserve the opportunities, the maximum opportunities for kind of reuse of the remaining lands of the property owner. Again, there's a very good chance that the building, the commercial building will be reused, but if it's not, if somebody comes along with another plan, we're really providing the maximum opportunity um, to have the best possible uh, use of the remaining property. Uh, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some other uh, feasible method, um, we do not believe there, there is no other alternative to the granting of the variances. Uh, you know, I think that if we didn't have these variances, we just wouldn't be able to carve out an appropriate development site. Uh, whether the variances are substantial, uh, I don't think they're substantial in nature, impact, or amount. Again, given the location and the physical conditions of the property, the existing structures that we have to work with, uh, the need to um, have uh, driveways for the new development in appropriate locations. Um, so those are the things that really drive kind of the, the layout of the, of the plan. Um, whether, um, whether the proposed variances would have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the district or the neighborhood. Again, we're cleaning up the site. I think we're making significant improvements to the physical condition of the property. Um, we are uh, cleaning up some driveway conditions, some non-conforming setbacks, uh, some non-conforming structures, and that, all of that really is an improvement to the existing conditions with a code-compliant development that is, the planning board's looked at it. We're proposing you know, an attractive new building. It'll have the appropriate landscaping. We're going to improve the safety of the driveways. It's going to be a quality uh, improvement to the corner. And um, whether the difficulty was self-created, obviously anybody who chooses to do something, anytime you want to build something, there is an element of self-creation. But it's the, it's the, uh, the hardship uh, really is created by the existing conditions. Again, we're not starting with a big open piece of land. We have to work with the existing conditions. We have these structures. We can't move them. So we're really working with the location of the houses and the existing conditions to, um, to lay out this subdivision and this site plan. So I, don't, I, I think those are the, the reasons that we need these variances. They really are not self-created. Uh, as far as comments, so there were some DRC comments. Um, a couple of them were, let's see, there was a, a comment about uh, curbed, uh, uh, sorry, concrete island in the Ridge Road right away that will be corrected uh, when the application is submitted to the planning board. Uh, a second comment was about relocating the sign so that it is code compliant. That also can be done uh, bef so that we can we won't need a variance for that. Uh, the third comment had to do with the single family residence on Jackson Road and again the concern for the 100 foot buffer to the residential area to the south and um, concerns about, you know, potential for uh, development of, uh, of this area. So I think that it's appropriate to leave that to a future time since we don't know what's going to be built or done with the remainder of the property. Uh, let's see, county, 
uh, referral comments are attached. There was really nothing in the comments of any uh, significance. There was a letter from a resident opposing the project. It's a resident who lives uh, a fair distance, I think several blocks from the location, um, was concerned with 18-wheel delivery trucks and tankers for disposal of used oil. There will be no 18-wheel trucks. It's not the type of truck sizes they get at Jiffy Lube. Uh, so that should be a non-issue. Uh, they also commented on a strip, small strip plaza or, or offices that um, were previously <coughs> proposed. Um, that proposal, I think she was probably referring to the Taylor proposal, which uh, Taylor canceled the contract and did not uh, move forward with that. They lost the tenant. Uh, so I think that those comments, um, while she expresses some concerns, I don't think those are concerns uh, that really apply to this project. Uh, and as I said, I think the only other comments I saw were from the planning board, uh, which supported the granting of the variances. And I think you have that. And, you know, we'd be happy to answer questions, give you more information. Thank you. <coughs> I hope I didn't talk too fast. I have a couple questions. Sure. <coughs> the nine-foot setback, it's a side setback. Um... What is it to? What is it? The nine foot. The nine foot setback. Yes. That's being requested. Yes. What is it to? Uh, it is right here, Don. It is the two-story house. It is the house at 974 Jackson Road. So it is the setback from that house to the property line that's being created. Right, but what? It's on the side to the south. But what are to what though? <laughs> Set back for yeah, so, well, they yeah. created a lot line to the to the lot line yeah. for MC to, but that's still the same district. Yeah, well, yeah, but they're creating a lot line, which is nine feet from the yeah. Line. Map, map's a little confusing. Is what I'm no, saying. Uh, there, there should be a couple of additional variances. Um, oh, yeah, so the, so it's to the other. Uh, I see. Right. What I'm doing what you're establishing two lots. So it's for the other lot. It's not for. The right. Jiffy Loop block. Right. Oh, We're gotcha. just creating, uh, right. You're, you're subdividing the two, one and two. I get that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was thinking that it was on this parcel. Uh, gotcha. No, no. Yeah. So the only the only impact on this parcel from the area variance for the parcel with the Jiffy Loop is the the area. Correct. Okay. Yeah. What about the uh, the dumpster enclosure? That looks like it's only it's, two or three feet off the line. There's there's supposed to be buffer separations for that. Yeah. That's the, the, but uh, I don't see a dimension I, there. Yeah, they're not listed either. There's a dumpster in the southeast yeah, corner. Right yeah. yeah. The side buffer should be 20 feet total. The end rear buffer should be 25 feet. So you're telling us that there's some variances, additional variances that were pointed out? No, that's, that, that's my but opinion. I mean, we did review, I think we did get a list of, we did get a review back with the, the necessary variances. Because um, looking at the separation from the uh, apron of, to Jackson Road to the Jiffy Loop, you got a 3.5 foot separation from edge of pavement to the property line. Mm -hmm. There should be a 20 foot separation there. Exactly. If you're looking at that as a side, if you're looking at that as a rear, um, that would be 75 feet. I'm, I'm sorry, buffer would be 25 feet. If you bear with me, I have to see if I can track down the email with the review. And I, I don't know how that was done, Josh. I don't know who does the review yeah. or how that. Several people. No, I, I was very confused with the nine foot, and I thought it just dealt with this property. But now that I'm looking at the remaining properties listed as lot one and then lot two, so you're combining four properties into two lots. So, yes. I believe this is the subdivision here. So if you <coughs> have my mask on, it's on the floor. I, I, so I know, I can't get myself. So we have the corner parcel right here. This is 1161. Then we have 974. A portion of the land of 974 is, is going to be joined in to the to the corner parcel for Jiffy Loop. The house at 1171, that is also 
That is also uh, having a lap line change. This back area is going to be combined with the remainder of 974 and the remaining holdings of the owner. And that frontage portion is part of the disease partial. Does that all make sense? Now it does. Okay. <clears throat> now, with you establishing these new property lines, why could, but there again, in my opinion, you rec you're going to require a variance the way it's presented at this point in time uh, for a 20-foot buffer or 25-foot buffer, depending on if it's considered side or rear. Why could that not be subdivided so it complies with that? Why would it not be subdivided to comply with the, the, ne acre? the necessary uh, buffers? This way, you can take care of the area. <coughs> so we were not aware that there was a buffer variance was not pointed out as required. So we were not aware that that was an issue. So we can certainly go back and look at it. Um, so are you saying once you get a use variance, it's different it, zoning? There, well, the big thing is the use variance. Yeah. Yeah. The area variance is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, come, come down the road. That extends yeah. the reason if they redo the lines, and yeah. you don't need the variance. That, that, that's right. Yeah. Then becomes, yeah, yeah. becomes two different zones. <laughs> well, no, well, still located in MC area. Yeah. But you eliminate, we could eliminate oh, yeah. all of the variances yeah. in terms yeah. of the area. Yeah. So the buffers are still within the MC, not just between the residential and the MC. This, this whole project falls within the MC zone, if I'm not mistaken. It does. Yes. Even the property along Jackson Road. I, I think we, we ran into the buffer issue internal That's to right. itself right across the street in all those projects, right? Yeah. With the car wash, with doodle bugs, with mm -hmm. everything that's in there. Okay, so I have a district buffer of 100 feet that's required between lot one, two combined lots and the residential property further to the south. Mm -hmm. And then within the MC, I still have either a buffer of 20 feet if it's a side or 25 feet if it's a rear between the properties within the MC. Okay. Okay. And right now, uh, like I say, I'm finding one dimension that's three and a half feet to the north along the... Um, apron to Jackson Road. So that should be 25, uh, 20 feet or 25 feet of landscape area in there. Mr. Brett, do you want to uh, agree uh, <coughs> for the board to just undertake the use component tonight and uh, see if we can tackle that and then... I, I think we'd like to at least get that done. And if there, I, this is new information. Right, and then give you a chance to address and we are, and I should point out, we are requesting the minimum relief necessary in terms of our, our use variance as well. We're just keeping it to the Jiffy Wins project. Um, yeah, I guess let's focus, focus yeah. on the use variance. Yeah, yeah just, to, just to close out on, on this the thought about the, the area, what, what's the rationale? Uh, because you, you said that you the existing lot lines you reconfigure them or go, right. anyway, right? Mm -hmm. The two, the first two off of Jackson, along Ridge, that make up the Jiffy Loop parcel. Mm -hmm. uh, you reconfigure them from their current configuration, correct? Yeah, essentially. As exists today, I'm just why can't you get the the additional four thousand square feet? Well, I think there's two things. One, the site was designed to meet the needs of Jiffy Loop. And then when you look at code compliance, I think we looked at the current property owner owning this house and what he wanted to do with this house. He wants to keep this house because that house no, is I, I, I understand that. I think my, my point would be more to the southeast, into that this, section in there. this area? Right. You can carve out an additional 4,000 square feet to meet the area. Because I think what we want That's to do reasonable. is we don't want to hinder the ability to repurpose the remaining property. And we don't know who's going to use it. We don't know who's going to come along. And I think we want, well. Yeah, I think there's, uh, again, for the record, I'm Chris Boyer with Bowler Engineering. And um, this is a, an application where we're making a lot of things better. We're going from four small lots, uh, one of which is 18,000 square feet today, right? So they're very small lots. 
we're making the situation better by going from four lots to two lots. So even if we proposed half the size of the lot that we did now, it would be a, a vast, a very great improvement from the situation that is out there today. So we had to say, okay, we're, we're definitely making an improvement by going from four lots to two lots. Uh, all of the lots, both those lots, are coming more in conformance and compliance with code. And then the applicant, uh, the, the remaining landowner, uh, is going to be left with a lot that he's going to hopefully be able to somehow realize a return on. So we've taken the least amount of space that we can while increasing the lot size, yet allowing him to have uh, utilization of the most part of his land for future use. Because he's going to have challenges that's been noted here, whether it's a sewer easement that goes back uh, through that property, or whether it's the buffers that we were just talking about to the residential district. So. Um, we want to make sure that he's afforded the opportunity to have uh, all of the options that he can with those lot sizes. So the lot lines are there for those reasons that we want to save those two structures, making that corner lot much more conformance with the code, and yet allowing him to uh, develop more in the future. Because we are a very unique use here on this property. So. You would be hard pressed to find a user that is going to take only 3,000 square feet, only need 12 parking spaces. I mean, that's that's small, 12 parking spaces. Use no water, really. Produce no sewer. So we, it's a perfect situation where we can take his small lots, combine them, and and take the small lot the corner and have this use. It's very, it's almost tailor-made for it. So okay, we did not, you know, we're not including the other property in the use variance because there's no no known user for it, but it is. it has been marketed for quite some time and the hope is that he will get a user in there after this is approved. Okay, so uh, I think what we're hearing is you're going to table the area variance portion of the application to the April 13th meeting. Is that correct? Uh, I guess I need a clarification. Are you telling me we need addition, We do need additional area variances? Will we leave here tonight knowing exactly what we need? Or if I had a map that was the scale, I'd be happy to offer that to you. Now, buffers are to pavement also. I'm sorry? Buffers are to pavement also, not just building. That's correct. And they got the driveway right along the lot line. Yeah, that's right. I don't even think it's five foot. That should be the residential. I, I can't. I use my math that. language. It looks like it's 3.5 feet. Yeah. The buffer can be, a, it's internal to itself. We, we dealt with this mm -hmm. next door. So you're saying this, so where is it? So it, it is a variance or it isn't? It would require a variance. Yeah. You don't meet the buffer requirement. We need to add that. I, we should probably tackle the use variance because without use variance, all the rest of the yeah, no, 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 and I'm just asking her if she's willing yeah, to take it. Uh, yeah, I mean, if that's what you would like us to do, we're going to have to be back here if we need a buffer variance. That's no, why I have the clarification that we need we, another we, variance. We plan to move forward with the use variance. Okay. We, I'm asking you if you're willing to accept the yeah. table this piece of it, the area variance, so we can move on to the other sure. part. Sure, yes. Okay. All in favor of tabling the area variance request for uh, this Ridge Road Jiffy Loop project to April 13th? Aye. 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 Okay. So, with respect to the, to the use variance, uh, there are two key documents here. One dated March 8th, 2021, prepared by Ms. Brooke, and the other prepared by uh, Caliber, which is dated... January 22nd, 2021, and that was prepared by Jacob Rivera, correct? Mm -hmm. um, those address, I, I believe, in addition to, there, there is some area variance um, language in here, but it does address the uh, use variance request, how the property has been marketed, 
It also addresses the financial uh, statement for 2017 through 2020, documenting that it has lost um, money consecutively for those four years. And then also on the caliber document letter, um, it goes into detail on who this property was marketed to and the reduction in pricing history uh, over the time that it was marketed by Caliber. Prior to Caliber, I understand it was marketed by who? Uh, Did you say? Hunt was <coughs> Hunt, Magellan, and Pyramid. Which and is in your possibly one more. Yeah. March, 20, March 8th. Yeah. Um, there is automotive use, uh, uh, that limelight across the street, kitty corner, is that, I don't have the uh, zoning map, is that MC? Directly across the street? Kitty corner, limelight, it's been three or four things, uh, just to the east and on the south side of the bridge. Yes, that is MC. That's MC, which is automotive use. Is uh, AutoZone, is that considered automotive use? Yes, they receive the variance. They received a variance too. Okay. And then just south of there in the uh, plaza with the, um, not Savers, but what's the other one? The Royal Car Royal Royal No, Car the, um, sorry. Uh, Happy Days is in the front, in the back is. Uh, oh, Goodwill in the back. Oh, Goodwill, and then Mavis. there's yeah. the Mavis. Yes. Is that MC? Mavis. That's that's MC. They so that's variance. MC. That's an identical use to this, correct? Mm -hmm. um, in the MC district. Anyway, um, if we proceed with the uh, use variance, I would suggest that we just adopt what's been presented. Final financial statements. All right, sorry. Those are my points. Go ahead. Anybody else? <laughs> no, I, I think it's a great use of a uh, commercial property, uh, low intensity, and in, uh, especially at the end intersection. Knowing the number of applicants that were interested at this location, uh, I believe Ms. Brug did indicate uh, fast track, and they were discouraged. I believe after that, the board did receive a proposal for a little strip plaza, right. which right. variances were granted. Mm -hmm. uh, there were covered all four granted. properties, I think. Yeah. Yes, I, you're correct. Uh, but I think. Uh, the loop that's being presented and the use that's being presented as a chippy loop, uh, I think, be a great uh, use of the property. I'll bet the traffic. How many how many vehicles a day do you anticipate? Do you have any? If they're super successful, they'll have 30 to 35 customers a day. So the Royal Car Wash has probably 10 times that a day. <laughs> that's what it costs oh, for an hour. Yeah, I'm, I'm just guessing, but I, there's all these cars lined up there. I mean, they have enough stacking room, but right. it's a lot but of traffic. Definitely much more traffic. So than the relative, I'm just trying to make a comparison relative to that use. This is much less impactful as far as traffic generation. Plus, I think with only four bays, you're never releasing four cars all at the same time, so it's a very minimal well, well, no, impact on the jackpot. If I need to get oil change and there's a line, I keep going. I just I'll go tomorrow. You know, people don't wait in line for an hour for an oil change. That's just the way it is today. The, the reconciliation sheet you have of, of income, um, that was, I guess, sandwiched between your letter and Calvary's, what, what's the income coming from? Uh, so there is the, the income. So there is a tenant in uh, the house of Jackson Road, 9th and 4th. There is a tenant on the first floor of this building. There is no income from the corner. So not have income to pay the taxes, insurance, expenses. I did not include the, there are, yeah, okay. doesn't include any more. Right. So then in addition to uh, the record that the chairman indicated, there's also that reconciliation of, uh, of uh, negative income for the preceding four years. That corn has been for sale a long time. Uh, the 
this is unlisted, right? Unlisted. Right. Pursuant to NYCR section 617 environmental code, I'll, I'll make a motion. Uh, this would be an unlisted action. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, once again, we're not going to address the area variances requested tonight. That portion has been tabled to the April 13th meeting. Um, and we will open it up to public comment. Um, if you have any comments for or against this application, please call 872-7011. It's a waiting game now. Should I comment? Da, da, da. <laughs> you know, one of the uh, at, or one of the neighbors were concerned about large tanker trucks, and you mentioned the eighteen. Well, how do you how do you pick up what kind of vehicle? What kind of vehicle takes the old oil away and brings the fresh supplies? They're uh, a straight body trucks, no pivot point in them, uh, and the, the volume isn't that great. Um, that a tractor trailer would be warranted for those types of pickups. And then also the used oil is uh, usually picked up by a, a dealer specific to the marketplace which JP Loop is located. They recycle, so, they recycle it. Right. right. It wouldn't be um, shipped across the state to a central location. It's it's handled locally. Let me say, I was over on Ridge Road East today. There's a new one over there because they used to be on a corner. Now they're not in a corner. But uh, they dramatically changed the um, facade of those. Mm. Yeah. It's actually a pretty nice looking building. Yeah, the planning board seemed pretty satisfied with where we're headed with it. And uh, I think we'll have a nice project, but this board has the ultimate. I think with the use variance, it, uh, it doesn't go anywhere without you. So. It's a brick, brick building, not that it affects our. It will be brick, and that was at the request of the town. But Tony Kashani is a mason. He <laughs> was his entire life, so he loves brick. That's yeah. <laughs> That, that uh, concludes the public portion of this meeting. Um, I, I would make a motion, once again, adopting. I don't know if we need to go back through and reiterate all of this. Do you? <coughs> you make it on the record. Obviously. Right. Um, so we'll adopt the, once again, I'll repeat this part. We'll adopt the letter from um, Ms. Bug on March 8th, 2021. The financial statement that's including included therein, and the January twenty second, two thousand and twenty one letter from Calibers Jacob Riviera um, as the um, findings for this application. And with that being said, we'll pull this back down. I will make a motion to grant an area variance for the Jiffy Lube uh, project located at 1161 and 1171 Ridge Road and 974, no, it's not 974 Jackson Road. Mm -hmm. We're just dealing with this. It, it's called it's called it, includes Jiffy Lube. it does, it includes a portion of the land of 974. Okay. And use variance, right? Not area variance. Sorry, I thought I said use, no? I just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, no, I, th I think I said here. Grant a use variance for Jiffy Lube, which is now Lot 1, consisting of um, property associated with 1161, 1171, and 974 Jackson Road, correct? Yes. Um, from the applicant Guggenheim Development Services LLC for, um, let me skim down through this, uh, which Jiffy Lube is an auto care shop on a proposed 0.83 acre, acre parcel consisting of existing SBL numbers 080.13-2-1, 080.13-2-1, and 080.13-2-52 um, located in a MC medium intensity commercial district under section 225-17 of the code of the town of Webster. Should, did you reference the map? That they, that the reason I'm always going to bring it up is because we're not giving uh, use range to all of 974, just the right. one. Right. 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 Okay, okay. Thank you. 
and it's eight point eight four, not to be nitpicky. I'll make sure it's right. Second, yeah. Point eight four. Mr. Newtown? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. Mrs. Bolo? Aye. Mr. Hauser? Aye. Mr. Stafford? Aye. You have your use variance. We will address the area variances in um, on April 13th. Do we need to submit anything to um, we'll to add that variance, or will you add it to the legal notice? We, we probably will have to re-advertise it because it wasn't previously uh, included in the uh, advertisement, right? Yes, we will re-advertise with the whole. Do you need anything from us, or? Um, I'll follow up with you. Okay. Yeah. Just let us know if you need a letter or. We need to note it on the plan or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything that might be helpful? Uh, if we are looking for uh, a buffer variance that's there, should we obtain a letter from our adjacent neighbor uh, that that buffer would be against? Is that the buffer to you? It will be part of this whole project, yeah. but we could for the record. I don't think we need it. I mean, of course he's going to hear it. Yeah, I think mean, we'll be off with my The biggest concern I have is that we can't change the plan too much. There. That's that's why I'm... Uh, I understand. I think we understand the variance request, but we just need to address those issues. So. <coughs>